Hey gang, welcome back to Let's Level Up. My name is Rick, and today we're going to be talking about Passport Game Studios Quartz. Uh, this is a really cool game designed by Sergio Halliban and Mr. Andre Zatz. Um, and this is a three to five player game, plays in about 45 minutes, and that we play dwarfs, uh, who are undoubtedly, undisputably the greatest race in all of fantasy. I'm sorry if you disagree. You elf fans, but dwarves are the best, and um, that's just that. It's it's just a fact. So in this game, you get to scratch your beard a little bit, go into the mines, and try to make sure you have a plentiful bounty of gems. Um, there are several bad things that can happen to you, including the other miners. Um, while you're down there, you can get injured, and if you do, you happen to lose all of your work for that day and it can be so incredibly frustrating. Uh, Quartz is a really, really awesome fun game. Um, this is a game that I play with my game group and uh, we are generally pretty aggressive with one another but Quartz brings out the real ugly side to us. Um, and overall I think it's a really fun time while that's happening. So let me take this down to the table. I'll show you a little bit more of how the game is played and then we'll come right back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. Here we have the contents of Quartz kind of laid out. This is a one-player setup, but really it's the game is supposed to be set up here for three, which is the minimum number of players in the game. Game plays up to five. Um, so what we have here are a few simple components. First, there's the main tableau that sits in the center of the board. Um, this acts as our round tracker in the form of days. Uh, there are only so many... Uh, times that we can venture into the mine each day and that basically ha uh, rather we are forced to pull out either when we get an accident or when we're too scared and we absolutely can't mine any further um, for risk of injury to ourselves. Um, there is the deck of quartz cards um, which are also bravery bonuses here. Every player will have five cards dealt to them at the beginning of the game. Uh, so we have five cards there in our hand. Um, each player will have the opportunity to earn one of these tokens here which allows us to forfeit an obsidian, and I really like the artwork here. It's like a um, one of those old yellow for dummies books, so mining for dorm dummies there. Uh, we'll have our action card, uh, which will give us a breakdown of all the actions that we can take during our turn. But I'll also have a chest where we can actually store up to two gems uh, for when we sell. So basically, this bag right here represents the mine. We can do certain things on our turn, and normally those will involve taking crystals out of the mine. So to mine a crystal, we'll basically just reach in, give the bag a good shake, pull out a crystal. In this case, ooh, we got a black, that is an obsidian. Obsidian is bad. If you get two obsidians, you actually take an accident, or rather you are um, uh, put into an accident. You forfeit everything that's in your mine cart now. It goes back in the bag, and you are out for the turn. You basically pushed your luck too much. Um, that is one way to get an obsidian, drawing it from the bag. You can also, there are several cards in the deck that allow you to give obsidian to people. Um, and there are also cards in the deck that can protect you from getting obsidian. So it kind of balances out there. So the meaner the group you play with here in Quartz, the more things are going to be really, really vicious for you. Let's try that again. Let's take another mine action and see if we can get something other besides a Quartz, well, excuse me, besides a uh, obsidian. So we got an amethyst there. Um, so in the bag itself, we have 18 obsidian, we have 15 quartz, 12 amethyst, 10 emeralds, 7 sapphire, 4 rubies, and only 2 amber. And then whenever at the end of our turn, or whether, rather at the end of our round, when we decide to leave the mine, whatever we have in our mine cart goes back with us to town, which we can then sell. So each of these, and what I'm going to do here is get a little close to the cart so you can see the values for each of these crystals as well. So when we go to back to town, we have the option here to sell our crystals here. So you can see the amethyst, the lone amethyst I have is worth two bucks. Um, but there are also some combos here that we can talk about here in a minute. Uh, quartz are worth a dollar. Uh, emeralds are worth three bucks. Sapphires, four bucks. Ruby, six. And the ambers are eight bucks a piece. Um, our objective at the end of five days is to have the most money. Uh, the cards that we have in our hand also have a dollar value in the top left corner. So any of those that we have left over, we can then sell. So for instance, if we keep this copy of Here We Go, um, it is worth three dollars at the end of the game. So a little incentive not to... Um, essentially blow every card you have as soon as you get it, kind of keep things to see where we go. Um, like I mentioned before, I can store emeralds, excuse me, store um, crystals here in our cart, excuse me, in our chest. 
and uh, basically protect them. Uh, so if I want to uh, basically stack up a certain kind of gem, um, and increase my chances of being able to get one of the big multipliers. I can do that by stacking those or storing those there or save valuable gems for when you do get the multipliers. That way they're even more valuable. So there's a lot of the strategy that goes into this game, uh, which is pretty weird for a pressure luck game. Uh, normally it's, it's, um, there's some other games that I've played where it's, it's more of a just a, yeah, do I do it to get the points or do I get out because I'm ahead? Um, this game, there's a lot to think about and the card interaction between the players expands that um, um, quite a bit. Um, so let's talk about some of the other actions here that we have. So we talked about mining the crystal. We can play an action card from our hand, and then the last action is leave a mine. So on your turn, you're going to do an action, and then it's going to pass to somebody else. So to break down action number one a bit more, uh, mine a crystal from the bag. Here is our bag. This is our mine. All crystals that are not in someone's chest at the beginning of the turn will be returned uh, to this bag, which means there's always a chance you're gonna draw one of the 18 obsidian here. Again, you just grab it, give it a stir, and then pull one out. And here we got another amethyst there. Uh, then this bag passes back to the middle of the table, and the next player in clockwise order can then take an action. So you're gonna want to watch what people are pulling out. Uh, not only because you're gonna wanna know what sort of chances you're gonna have to pull out one of the bad obsidian here, but you want to also know when the good valuable gems are there uh, and what the ratio is to really valuable gems to not so valuable gems to really terrible obsidian uh, crystals, I'm sorry, are left in the bag. Uh, not only that, but it's also going to give you a really good indicator on when you should play your cards and when you shouldn't from your hand. Now, there are two types of cards here. Let me go ahead and just change my focus just a bit. Um, there are these blue-backed cards here that you can see in my hand, um, but we also in the deck have some purple cards, um, which are designed to be more of a defensive or a counter. Here, This card right here is going to counter the gimme a hand here card. And this one is called, uh, nope, I'm on my break. Um, so this allows you to basically say, I'm not going to mind for an opponent. Um, let's see if I have a gimme a hand here card. Of course I don't. So if we take a look at gimme a hand here, this allows us to basically choose an opponent who then must mine two crystals. You may take one, but your opponent must keep the other. Now, so this wording on give me a hand here is actually really important. You may take one. It means you don't have to do it, but your opponent has to take um, the other one. Um, if you decide not to take one, your opponent's going to take both of those. So if your opponent happens to take two obsidian out of the bag, guess what? They're taking both. Unless they play the counter to that card before they draw. Um, again, nope, I'm on my break. Uh, so example of some of those other cards here we have, uh, here we go. And again, the dollar value of the card is here in the top left corner if you decide not to use it throughout the game. This allows you to mine three crystals and return any obsidian mined to the bag. Um, and my starting hand, I had that. I had a these don't belong to you. This allows you to steal two valuable crystals from another dwarf's mine cart. Uh, the word valuable there is very important. Obsidian, not that you would want to steal it anyways, is not considered a valuable crystal. Um, so basically any crystal that someone has in their cart that's not an obsidian. Um, here we have one card called crystal. What crystal? Uh, it's worth $2, and it allows us to place this cart beside your mine cart to protect one of your valuable crystals against the action card effects and accidents. Um, you discard this card at the end of the day there. Um, so again, this is going to allow us to, if we get an uh, amber as pictured here on the card, we can protect that from somebody stealing it from us or from something happening that would, would cause us to get rid of it. Um, and we have Eureka as well. Uh, Eureka basically says, mine seven crystals. You can choose one to exchange with one of your valuable crystals um, in your mine cart. So you basically get to mine seven, see what they are, and then take one of those seven and swap it out for something that you already have here in your cart. Um, so there are a lot of other types of cards, or excuse me, uh, cards in this game. Um, there are cards that allow you to steal from somebody. There are cards that allow you to basically um, trick them into making what they think is a fair deal when really you can swap a dollar gem out with somebody like Come Closer uh, for one of, like one of your quartz, which is worth a dollar, with an amber that they have, which again is worth the eight. Um, so there's a lot of really cool take that elements involved here with these cards as well. 
You'll be getting one of these every turn, um, and that's pretty important. Uh, you also have the potential to get bravery bonuses. If you're the first person to leave the mine, you get to take the leftmost bravery bonus. And uh, if you're the last person to stay in the mine, you get the, uh, the next to last there. So there's incentive for getting out first, and there's also incentive for sticking it out at the end of the game. Um, there's also going to be coins on these middle ones here. So you can see this one gives you a dollar, two dollars, and then three dollars. Um, basically, the longer that you stay in and the more players you have, the more incentive it's going to be to stay in the mine. A lot of people like to get in there, grab the really expensive crystals, and then get the heck out. So that way, you don't have to worry about getting obsidian. Uh, what I really like about this game, too, excuse me, the third and final action, other than play a card, is just to leave the mine. And you're basically going to take everything that you have in your cart, take it back to town that you can then sell. Uh, but one of the things I really like about this game is just the quality of the components here. And um, this may seem like a little thing, but these crystals here, um, I'm not sure they're just plastic crystal bits, uh, but they are very nicely done. Uh, and it looks very pretty. Like when it's all spread out in your cart like that, it just looks really, really nice. Um, and I think that's something that, um, you know, Passport should be commended on. Uh, the quality of the mine carts here for the player aids, the cards themselves, the token. Even these little tokens here are really, really top notch. And that's awesome. So here we have an example of a particularly really, uh, excuse me, a particularly nice day at the mine. Uh, in it, we got one obsidian, boo. Uh, we had four quartz, uh, one sapphire, and six ruby. Now you can sell your gems in any particular, excuse me, your crystals in any order you want, but there are certain benefits for selling things first. For instance, if I sell three of any one kind of gem, I can then double the amount that any particular uh, set of gems are after that. And that can be in any order. So if I have three of these um, smaller gems and then three rubies, I can sell the three smaller gems to double the value of all my rubies. Uh, the second option here is if I have four of a kind, I can then double the amount of two different types of gems. In this case, the rubies and the sapphire. Um, I, if I have five of any color, I can get eight bucks. And if I have six of any color, I can get 12 bucks there. Uh, in addition to what I'm selling the gems for. Um, so I think that's... Uh, again, really cool bonuses that you are going to uh, kind of tweak your gameplay and what you're storing, not only uh, what you're trying to mine at in the mine, but what you're going to be storing in your chest as well. Uh, so pretty neat stuff. Uh, so an example of what we are looking at here, what we're going to be selling this for, are going to be $4 for the four quarts. And then we're going to multiply the values of both of these by two. So we have uh, two uh, $6 uh, rubies. Uh, which is going to be another twelve dollars so all together that'd be twenty four dollars plus the original four which is twenty eight and then we have a four dollar sapphire which is going to be doubled as well because we do have four of a kind um, which is that's going to be another eight so all together thirty six bucks we get from this mock turn uh, for being able to sell these four quarts the two rubies and the four sapphires so if you can get four of a kind it can really really be worth your while but again, with any good pressure luck game, as soon as you see somebody who starts to get that and they have the one obsidian, you can play a card to, put, to basically drop another obsidian in their bank and then they are having an accident and having a really bad day. Uh, so that's basically how the game is going to work. You're going to do one action on your turn. Everybody's going to get a turn. You're going to keep playing that until there's only one person left in the mine, either through accidents or through people leaving. Um, there is a really cool variant um, that's in the rule book that if you decide to play with it, and I'd actually recommend it, um, it's really fun. The last person there can push their luck up to four more times by themselves rather than being forced to leave, uh, which is the default play setting there. So um, that's it basically for the rules of quartz. Why don't you follow me back to the game room now, and I'm going to give you my final thoughts. Well, that is it for Quartz. Again, Quartz on the outside can look like just your run-of-the-mill, push-your-luck games, but in it, you are dwarves, and that makes everything so much better. Like, have I told you how much I love dwarves in this video yet? Yeah, I just want to make sure, because if I haven't, I can talk about them a little bit more. So many good dwarves in fantasy. So many. Um, in this game, you really have to be so conscious and so, um, so incredibly... Um, uh, brave, I think, is the best way to do it. If you don't push your luck, somebody else will, and somebody else will get more points than you. If you push your luck too much, you'll get those two obsidian pieces, or somebody will drop an obsidian with you, and then you'll lose all of your awesome bonuses. 
combining that with the chest mechanic of being able to store gems throughout the different days so that way you can really maximize your hauls is I think is a really wonderful thing. On top of that, the card play that comes into this thing really, really makes Quartz stand out. Uh, not only are you pushing your luck every turn or trying to make sure, but your opponents are actively trying to root against you. And it is so incredibly fun and just such a really fun thing. There are a lot of really cool alternative game ways to play this thing. Um, but uh, this is this is a game out of the box, really, really fun. The components are absolutely incredible. The artwork on the cards are absolutely incredible. Uh, the stock and everything is just so, so well developed and, and produced uh, from Passport Games. Just a really, really good idea here. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of Push Your Luck games. I'm a big fan of most games, though, as you can already tell from looking at the channel. Uh, Quartz was one of the ones I definitely wanted to get on here. Raise a little bit of awareness if you haven't already seen this thing yet. Go check it out. It is super fun. Uh, pick it up a copy at your friendly local game store or anywhere online. Uh, you should be able to find Quartz now. Uh, I think I got my copy off of Cool Steps for $25-ish, $30 or something like that. I think MSRP will get it for $35. Uh, is it on the box? I don't see it on the box, but I'll put a clarification text here on the video if I am wrong about that. And if I am, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, overall, Quartz is really, really good. Check it out. I think it's something that all everybody can enjoy. And uh, I think the more aggressive game group that you have, the better fun you're going to have with Quartz. Um, I actually, whenever we played this game the first time, we played it wrong in it that when somebody got injured, we forfeited all of the Bravery bonus cards, not just the leftmost. Um, and that was a big problem for us. Uh, because we never got it because we were always so accident pro that at least one person a turn uh, was getting injured um, and we never got bravery bonuses. Turns out that is not the way the game is supposed to be played. Uh, but overall, I think we still had fun even playing with that crazy hardcore rule. Um, overall, a really, really fun time playing Quartz. So hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Tell all your friends about the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. And most importantly, until next time, game on.